Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Wargaming Terrain tutorial. Uh, this week's video we're going to be making these brick walls here. Now these are really cool looking pieces of terrain. You should be able to follow this process with me today. I did make some mistakes but hopefully you'll be able to avoid those. So most of this build is constructed with 6mm foam board as you can see here. Now I removed the paper from this stuff for this build. Uh, the size doesn't really matter here, it's just whatever encompasses the uh, overall shape you're looking for at the end for your brick walls. Uh, you just want to cut out rough shapes here to, to encompass those uh, final uh, brick walls that we're going for. I'm trying to use, maximize the amount of foam here, so I'm going to be using both sides of this little uh, piece that we've cut out here. Uh, both will make pretty sufficient brick walls for us, and uh, we'll be able to do a fair bit with these four little pieces here. Now when it comes to cutting your bricks, you want to make sure that you um, get these measured up first. I'm using 5mm by 10mm brick sizes here, so I'm just using my cutting mat as a guide. And as you drag your knife through here, you want to make sure that you are not cutting this too deep. So uh, you want to make sure that these are just very light lines that you're carving into these to make sure that you don't cut all the way through like you can see I did with that one. Just going through and marking all those with the knife first. Now this is one of my big mistakes uh, that I made here. I used this mechanical pencil to uh, widen the gaps uh, on all my brick lines. Uh, now I did realize way down the track from here that these lines were actually way too narrow. So don't get me wrong, I mean this looks substantially better than the original uh, with those lines carved in there, but if you're going to do this and you're going to use mortar, I would suggest definitely using a wider um, pen or a biro or something to widen those gaps between the bricks before you uh, carry on here. I'm going to move on now and add a little bit of texture here with this tin foil. Uh, you could use a rock as well, will do the trick. Uh, and once you've got a little bit of texture on that foam, you'll be able to move on now and start actually carving out this brick wall. Now if you've lined up your bricks on both sides of the foam board when you've carved them in, uh, this process will be very simple. You'll just be able to start pulling away at those bricks on the edges and it will actually pull away in the brick pattern that you've sort of etched into that foam board. Now you can also pull out bricks in the middle if you want to. You can do whatever you like here. Uh, this piece that we broke, if you remember from earlier, still going to use all of this. We're going to be, you know, maximizing the foam board usage here. So every little bit will be used in the end. Uh, these little bits that broke off, you can see here, uh, we'll be able to use this piece as well. This will be perfect for some of the upright supports that we'll put on the back of our brick walls to help hold them straight. So don't throw anything away. Uh, you know, breaks and stuff like that are just happy little mistakes and accidents that we can incorporate into the rest of our build down the track. Uh, as you can see there, making up those supports is very much the same as making up the original brick walls. Uh, just make sure you get something that fits and then just uh, uh, pull apart that brick pattern so that you've got that look that you want. Now to glue all this together I use PVA glue and pins, just gives me a little bit more working time with the glue. And for the bases I'm just going to be using cereal box cardboard, same as I did last week. This is just cereal box cardboard, I've got two sheets stuck together just to make them a little bit more rigid. And I've just cut out some basic shapes to uh, cover the base of these uh, brick walls. I don't want big bases here, uh, just something that's uh, just going to cover everywhere we need. And I'm just going to hot glue those brick walls straight onto that cereal box cardboard. At this point you want probably want to make a few final adjustments to your brick wall, see if there's anything else you'd like to change. And then we can start adding in some of the uh, ground cover and rubble around this. Now for the rubble around here, initially we're just going to start using all those little bits of bricks that we pulled off when we made the shapes for our brick walls. Uh, all this little rubble is perfect. Uh, it looks great. We didn't have to cut it all ourselves. Uh, it's all come out just from uh, scraps of uh, what we've done so far. So placing these around at different angles, different uh, piles, that sort of thing, you'll see that uh, they come together really quickly. You'll remember from last week we added some weights to these little bits of terrain here so the barrels and the pallet all have hex nuts inserted in them. This is just to help give these pieces some weight. Being cereal box cardboard and foam they are very very light otherwise. So these sort of uh, little techniques here to hide these hex, nut, hex nuts and these weights worked really well to sort of weigh down these pieces of terrain, keep them on the table. So. Uh, we're going to Mod Podge next, but uh, I just want to make sure that you guys understand at this point I haven't glued on the pallets or the uh, barrels. So I'm going to Mod Podge this first without the pallet and the barrels on there, and then I'm going to prime those separately and glue them on after this step. So uh, Mod Podge here with water and uh, black paint, it's just to try and fill in all the gaps, uh, give us a nice little prime coat. 
Uh, now here's another mistake I made uh, before I primed I should probably should have put these sticks on I'd wanted to put some timbers on here I'm just using simple match sticks but I wanted to scatter a few timbers around here before I moved on uh, completely forgot that in the first step uh, so I've glued them on now and I've also attached my uh, weights so my barrels and pallets and I'm just going to add in a few more details on the front uh, it's around about this point when I realise that the uh, little brick lines uh, that I've carved in there are just almost non-existent. So with the Mod Podge coat on there uh, and the time that's been to, for those to sort of spring back out, uh, I've got essentially nothing left of those uh, grooves between the bricks. So this is where I realised I really needed to uh, change that and fix it. So I, like I said, I should have gone in with a, bro a broader pencil in the beginning, made those wide, uh, lines wider, but uh, here we are anyway. So. Uh, once you've got it primed, uh, give it a little zenithal coat if you like. Um, if you haven't made the mistakes that I have so far, you won't need to go in here and carve these lines out. You will just be able to start painting straight up. So I'm just using craft paint, uh, some yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, raw umber, and some black and white. And I'm just going to be stippling in varying colours here, uh, mostly in the browns and a little bit of grey. I'm just going to stipple this on with a brush. I'm not trying to get full complete coverage but just trying to layer this stippling uh, of the different colours up. Uh, it just There's no real science that I could figure out to that. Uh, it's just sort of playing around adding little bits at a time uh, and slowly building up. You don't want any repeating patterns or anything like that. You just want some varying shades of uh, brown for those uh, brick walls. Now once you've sort of got your first few shades of uh, brown stippled on there, we're going to go back in and actually block in some of these bricks with the same colours. Uh, so feel free to mix those colours up a little bit, get some varying shades of brown uh, and the yellow ochre works really well as well. And you just want to go in, you don't want to do all of your bricks here, you just want to do a few scattered around randomly that are blocked in. So before we move on, we're going to give all our bricks a quick coat of matte varnish. This will help protect the paint especially for the next stage of this process where we're going to get a little bit rough with these. So a bit of varnish over those bricks and that paintwork will help protect it and keep it in place for this next step. For the mortar on our bricks, uh, we're going to be using just some simple spac filler here. This stuff will push across our bricks and fill in all our gaps. Uh, it's going to get a little bit messy, but this stuff cleans up really well with some water, so have a little tub of water next to you, uh, that will make a big difference. So uh, we can go pretty uh, heavy with this spackle, we just want to start uh, pressing it in and pushing it across uh, the face of all our brickwork and this will slowly start to fill in those uh, mortar lines for us. So uh, you might find for some of the little uh, corners and stuff a little tool to push it in and get it into those mortar lines will, be, will uh, help a lot. Uh, to clean up, basically, I've just used a wet rag, uh, also just, uh, you know, wet my finger and rubbed it on the brickwork. Uh, if you slowly clean these bricks off uh, quite carefully here, uh, slowly you'll get the uh, surface area clean and the only thing that will remain is all the mortar between the bricks. Now, if you've put any little uh, holes or cracks or divots in your bricks, you probably want to clean those out of that spackle. Uh, and once you've got that all done, uh, we can continue on then while that dries and finish off this base. The base I'm also adding in some extra rubble so this is just some different shaped rocks, different sizes of pebbles and stuff that I'm going to add around. This just adds a more natural rubble look to everything rather than just having the foam board on there. I'm going to also be using some brown battleground here uh, as well as some of those other rocks and pebbles just kind of all mixed in together uh, and this is going to make up some of our ground cover. I'm going to leave some of the grey ground exposed as well, uh, that doesn't hurt at all, it's it's you know it's quite neutral, it's quite good for uh, especially with this colour of rocks. Uh, I won't be painting this ground cover at the end, I will probably give it a wash of Agarix Earthshade, but yeah we won't be painting that ground cover. We'll just glue it in place and once that first coat, uh, first run is dry we'll go back over and soak all of that ground cover with a little bit of PVA glue and water uh, and that'll just seal everything in, make sure those rocks and pebbles aren't going to break away in the future. Once that's all done I'm going to go in and add a couple of grass tufts. Now this could be left to probably the very last stage if you wanted to. Uh, you don't have to do this at this point, you could probably go in and uh, touch up all your painting and uh, finish all your ground cover before you go and put your grass in, but I don't know what I was thinking, I just went for it. <laughs> it works. Uh, so uh, I'm adding some posters now and you'll see this piece of uh, paper I've got with posters on it has been ripped, so that's fine, keep those. You'll. Uh, it's easier to rip these before you put them on the wall. 
uh, than it is to rip them once they're glued in place. So if you want to make any damage to your poster before you put it on, just make sure you do that before you glue it there. It makes it a hell of a lot easier. So once you get this sort of doused in some PVA glue or some watered down PVA glue, I just push it in place wherever you want it. Uh, again, because you've been using PVA glue, you'll have a bit of working time here to sort of make adjustments and move it around a little bit. Once you've got it in the place you want though, you want to go back over it then with another good soaking of PVA glue and water here. Now I just cover it up pretty much and then just get a dry uh, paper towel or a rag and I just uh, press it in and soak up all that excess glue. Uh, what that'll do is uh, hopefully push it into the uh, grooves of the brickwork and make, a make it look a little bit more settled in place. I'm going to do the same thing for the drums. I'm going to add a few little signs and stickers to the side of some of these oil drums that we've made. It just adds a little bit of variation to those, a nice little splash of colour here and there. And finally for the weathering on this one, I'm just going to be using some dry pigment here, so just some raw umber. And I'm just going to be very lightly and very carefully sort of adding in some you know, uh, water runs or some weathering down onto this brickwork just to kind of pare it all back. It looks very, very new and shiny at the moment. So adding in some of this dirt and mold and stuff will certainly help to sort of pare it all back and bring it all together. So uh, this pigment is perfect. Just be very careful with it. It's uh, easy, easy to get on, uh, impossible to get off. So uh, just be a little bit careful with this. Take little steps at a time and hopefully by the end uh, you'll have your completed brick wall and you'll be ready to add these to the table. Now I do want to give a quick shout out and thank you to those people that have supported me so far and the drive to get a new camera and lights for the channel. It's a long road and uh, you know I hope you know I'll be able to provide some of those improvements to you soon but thank you very much for those guys that have contributed so far. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. I do have videos coming out regularly and thank you very much for watching. I will catch you all in the next video.